sure can here. How's it going, my friend? It's uh, going pretty good. I mean, uh, I had to skip out just now for a bit, but um, this was a very good series. And honestly, although these teams are both, um, you know, a bit of the uh, of the newer teams, I'd like to say they're they're kind of below everyone else in the rankings, like uh, that you would expect from Diamond. But right, really, right. they are impressive to watch. Right. Like Reason's uh, draft right there, <clears throat> difficult to pull off, but they did it really well. Yeah, and I mean, they're definitely up-and-coming teams. Wap Dash currently uh, ahead of e even Evil Corporation on the, the standings for the for the Dadai Bonnie League tournament. I know there's a lot going on, but I, I mean, I've just been impressed in general by both of these teams, and I'm, I'm glad to see them working their way up for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but yeah, Reason Gaming did take one and a stunner. Uh, they just out-drafted, out-played. Uh, Wap Dash, but we'll have to see. We're, it's looking like a completely different s series already. Um, with a Behemoth and Gladiator picked up on the Legion side, and a Hellbringer and a Warbeast picked up on the Hellborn team. Okay, so Warbeast again, Hellbringer again. Hellborn team seems to like their last draft, and maybe they'll go for something similar, but Wap definitely changing it up. All right. Yeah. I mean, the War Beast, I, I don't understand why they let that go through all the bands. I mean, Tundra was definitely a problem with the bird, but Archie Tiger on War Beast is also really effective. Yeah, yep, definitely. I was going to say the Tundra is definitely a little bit of a respect ban there, but if the, you have to pick one of the lesser of two evils, I, I, I'll take a Tundra as an opponent versus a War Beast because he's just yeah. so versatile. I mean, you have to understand that when, when you've, use your w on warbeast per auto attack it's 44 times 5 that's 220 damage per auto attack yeah it's just, that everybody on your team gets it's insane it's in team fights it's in pushing it's in farming yeah it's just and it's just an all-around one of those abilities that, are, that do so much more than it, it appears at first glance now they pick an empath too are we gonna see it's gonna be an outlandish carry maybe i don't know I mean, Empath has many, many uses. I mean, you can dual mid him easily because of that wall. You can even man up with him if you want. Again, because of that wall. If anybody's ever out of position, here comes a wall. And he has a stun, so he's just a really good laner in general. And um, then after that, he's still got the ultimate, which superpowers any uh, carry. I would like to see them ban Sandrith, though. Just because looking at the Legion team, they can set up ganks so easily for a Sandrith. Yep. And with the Behemoth Gladiator, one of those here, just those heroes that are so good at prolonging a game. Um, really, if you pick a harder carry like Sandrith and you have those guys to back it up, even if you fail a little bit early game, it's going to be hard for Hellborn to finish the game off. Um, they're just really good at preventing base sieges, in my opinion. So I would like to see a hard carry like that as well. It's a shame we don't really see Clanks anymore. Well, that's because they decided, let's nerf that hero into the ground and never see it again. Did Pretty they really? Much. What, what happened to him? They uh, nerfed uh, Thunderclaw, I'd say. They made it way too expensive and uh, made it less effective. And then they decided to make his flight, like, it, it became worse. Like, four mm -hmm. seconds. Duration, the, the duration was reduced by four off seconds. takes a lot more when he gets hit. Yeah, huh? per, auto, per auto attack. Right. And then they uh, increased the mana cost of it as well. It used to be 60 on Bang and uh, 60 on Hawk. And they changed some stuff around with the ultimate that um, the the first pet used to be the one that did everything in AoE. And the second pet was the slow. But now they made it that the first pet is the single target slow. And the second pet is the AoE damage. Oh, wow. Yeah, so That's they really changed it really. Like... He, was, he was strong, but it wasn't like he was picked every game. He was just... He was picked every game. Remember uh, Dreamhack? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Dreamhack. that was it, it. Was every game? Reason? I mean, at the time, Reason or ECX. Now it was just absolutely stupid. But they, you still had to build a team around him too, because he was still easy to kill. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I don't think he needed. I, don't, I really don't think he needed the, the nerf. Definitely not that heavy. Oh, that's a shame. Oh well. Oh, well, there's plenty of other carries on there. I mean, Gladiator, he's going to be played in somewhat Red of a, a farming role here. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. And here comes so the main the carry. Ravenor. I don't... 
I'm not sure I really like that versus a Warbeast because Warbeast can just run away. Yeah, and uh, Warbeast is definitely going to get a shrunken head too. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of the damage is superior, but the ball lightning can still be dodged as well. Yeah, and the extra damage from his W and E. But yeah, not sure about the Ravnor pick right now. I mean, if it's if it's that they're tri laning, then I completely understand. Because then they have a really good tri lane hero. Then they have Behemoth, Ravnor, Empath. They have a Gladiator soloing mid and a Wretched Hag solo. Huh. So, I mean, they don't really have a hardcore carry, I'd don't. say. It's so much magic damage, too. It's very, very one-dimensional lineup, honestly. So this is one of those games where you'd say, Bubbles, you should get a Gnome's Wisdom because you get two magic armor for your entire team. Yeah. I would say that makes sense. Yeah, they changed that item around as well. Yeah, so, there's been so many changes here, and I'm I've been playing a little bit more. I'm trying to catch up on all the items, but it, if you take a break for like two months, then they reworked so many items for me. It's crazy. Yeah, it's just that one big update that happened, which kind of reverted everything. I'd say because. Um, you could argue that Nitro was really overpowered for a bit, same way as Parallax was really strong for a bit. So they toned that down a bit. They made Magebane a little bit less strong. They reduced his armor by a bit. Then they, um, what was it? Oh yeah, they, wait. Anyways, there were a lot of changes pretty much. They uh, decided to revert some of the things that they had before. Uh, I'm trying to think of something specifically that they changed. Oh, yeah, Monarch. They buffed a lot. That's the hero I'm thinking of. I like of. Monarch now. Yeah, I'm surprised we don't see her at all. I mean... Yeah, the hero is broken. It's it's powerful for sure. Is she allowed in tournament play currently or no? I think so. Huh. Okay. But she's completely broken. They picked her a, a lot uh, at the Sydney tournament I covered. She was a very popular hero. Um, even if just for the two abilities, the wards and the cocoon. I mean, those that those are just a reason enough to that they yeah. picked her almost every single game. But Hellborn team, I really like Reason's draft again here. Um, the Lodestone was banned previously, so they didn't get like that all-in wombo combo. But now they definitely have the potential. Um, Bubbles, Ultimate, Shatterstorm, and a Malphus that can really tear a team apart. Especially, there's a lot of squishy heroes over there. To be honest, though, Doctor Repulsor was not banned. And that would have been a perfect hero for the draft. Instead of what? Swiftblade? Instead of Swiftblade, yeah. Because I'm thinking Swiftblade is going to, you know, he's going to get kited a bit by uh, Hag. And, I mean, Ravenor does not really care that much. I mean, the ultimate's going to do a, a lot of damage. But the spin, it doesn't really matter for Ravenor because he'll still do a lot of damage. And, I mean, it's really good. They have the match community versus all of that stuff on Legion. But... Dr. Repulsor yeah. is so strong with the uh, Warbeast. It would have been more of a solid late game pick, too. It, 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 to me, it seems like they just basically got Swift Blade to give them some type of presence in the mid game. Yeah, um, but Doctor has that as well with the ganking presence. The moment he hits level 6, bam. Hag dead. It's true. I don't know. I would have just liked to see... Yeah, I, I don't think Swift Blade Doctor. fits so awesome with this team. Um I I, I, he he kind of fits the. He, it's not the exact same at all, but like Warbeast and Swiftblade, they, I mean the extra physical damage for Swiftblade is nice, but he, I mean he also dispels it when he spins. So he's not gonna really benefit from that. All right, we're gonna have Bubbles against Hag in the middle lane. That should be interesting. Lodestone up against Ravenor in a harassing Empath, and then Hellbringer up against Behemoth. Um, obviously, Swift Blade in the lane as well. So. Man, this 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 uh, matchup in mid, it's been so long since I've seen this. Bubbles versus Hag. Oh my god, that takes me back. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It used to be like the two most popular heroes. <laughs> okay, but uh, Tussie is uh, wrecking right now. He's already got two denies. And in one of these matchups where you have ranged versus ranged, Denies do so much because you only get a third of the experience. Yeah, definitely. I, I think eventually they're going to start harassing maybe once they hit level two or three and then it'll be 
But still, the heroes are very similar in composition, too. They have a they have a nuke that's possible. Here comes the initiation down on the Lodestone. He's in a bad way as the ball lightning connects. One more auto attack. He does get a nice rocket drill off that's going to keep him alive. That was really well played by Lodestone there. He had to wait just for the perfect timing. There's no bloodlust just yet. Yep. But, I mean, Lodestone should have no problem versus uh, this lane, I think. If he keeps his head about him, I mean... If yeah. he has a rocket drill, he shouldn't be able to die. Yeah, he would, he would definitely have to make a mistake to fall. But we see it time and time again. Uh, suicide players get greedy. And <laughs> that's probably yep. like 9 out of 10 times where the bloodless kill happens. Yeah, and with that little action he had, he got lane control. Oh, Ravener here. The one thing is if he can wait to sit, send the ball lightning after the rocket drill... Yeah, nice sun coming up from time to die. It's Making sure still, to hit both of them. Yeah, it's still... Rocket Drill really sends you so far. Even mm -hmm. if the ball any connects, Ravener would be almost diving the tower with that lane positioning. Yeah, and he wouldn't have had enough damage. Maybe they could have gone in uh, range with the wall then, but... Either way, what uh, Legion is doing is good. They've uh, got some stacks on the pull. They've got one stack on the pull now, and... Basically, once they get lane control back, they should be fine, because one more Rocket Drill in... I don't know, like 30 seconds, and then he's out of mana. Completely. Now Behemoth rotating into the middle of the lane here. Maybe looking to set something up on Bubbles, who's really low health, but Wretched Hack doesn't have enough mana for even a, a sonar scream, so... Yeah, nice uh, health bot being used by Bubbles, making sure he won't get ganked, but look at this! Oh, that yeah. is so aggressive from Tussie! What is he doing? I don't know, uh, War Beast 2 missed. walking in, he's gonna drop the Fisher stun out. He may not fall Archie here. with the blocks? Oh, uh, it's not going to be enough. And we haven't even talked about this, but Gladiator is in the woods. Yeah, what? <laughs> I hate it. he is. And here comes initiation. They're going to follow up on a Gladiator. A nice oh, fisher. Warbeast is dead. I'm just keep him alive a little bit and lock Warbeast in place. Like you said, bloodless kill going out. Credit for Tassie, but really, Behemoth with the, the big plays there. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was just so much greed coming out from uh, Hellborn's side. There was no reason for them to stay that long. They couldn't get a kill with uh, all the spells that they that they'd already used, and now Warbeast, who uh, you know usually farms quite decently, just got a bit too overconfident. Yeah, and that kind of closes the gap between him and Gladiator. So. Yeah, I still don't like uh, Gladiator Woods though. Will he pick up a bottle? Yeah, it looks like he just bought one. I'm pretty sure. But at the same time, uh, I mean Gladiator. Yeah, he's not an efficient farmer in the woods, but. He can definitely set up pretty good, you know, ganks, uh, especially picking up a bottle, too. We're probably going to see him hit up bot lane and mid. Yeah, Bubbles is rather good against those ganks, though, because he can take cover the uh, showdown. Mm. Well, what, as on auto cast you could take cover? No, he can just, if he uh, times it correctly, he won't True. get sent back. Here comes initiation. Lodestone's going to get locked down. He can get the rocket drill off with the ball lightning connects. Or yeah, Ravener dive. I mean, yeah, it's too far. That's what. But I doesn't know. matter. <laughs> He's so tanky. I mean, they don't have the damage to take him down. Uh, if the timing works on both parts too, though. I mean, at level one, you don't have much of a choice. But later on, uh, the showdown, he can pull him back before. Yeah, yeah but that argument is the same for uh, Bubbles. Though, once he gets more levels and take cover, you can just use it early on. The moment you see the pitfall being cast, you know, you just have to wait one one second, then you take cover for two and a half, and then you're fine, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. All right, I don't think Gladiator will be putting a lot of points in a showdown anyway, so yeah. Not the best matchup, but overall, here goes Lodestone. He's going to get locked down again. If you can put the showdown on him now, there we go. They connect a hit onto Lodestone, putting in a decent amount of damage. He's going to get creep blocked by his own creeps in top lane. Swiftblade gets a kill onto... Behemoth. Behemoth, wow. Yeah, and he's a little bit in trouble here. And he needs to wait for an item delivery. A TP. Uh, you have overlays on, apparently. Uh, it was for like a half a second. Okay, no, that's fine. Silly oh, what a spin oh, from look Cyrox. Look at that spin, but he's still not safe. Um, yeah, Hellbringer needs to put... He pulled. Hellbringer pulled at the same time. That... Oh, oh but he's still gonna get him. Fisher's up in two seconds. Oh, he misses the. Oh, okay. To get the Fisher. All right. Wow. 
Okay. He actually will punish Swift Blade here, so Swift Blade pays, and that's pretty good for Behemoth, honestly. That's really good for Behemoth. I mean, the fact that Hellbringer pulled at that exact moment, that was his wrong. They must have... That, that was communication error. I mean, why would you go for a kill when you don't have creeps to back you up at the tower afterwards? Yeah, it was pretty risky. Maybe he didn't... I didn't see the whole fight, so I don't know if he was that low or what happened, but... Uh... Yeah, I think he just took a bit too many tower hits when he was yeah. running through the tower. Definitely a smidge of greed there. Lodestone, though, rotating him Laney doesn't have boots yet, so this is going to be a little bit tricky to actually... They have the ultimate the from Bubbles, off. though. Oh, but oh. they should initiate with the ultimate. And then Rocket Drill after the after he's stunned. That, yeah. Then it's a oh, sure top kill. Lane, more dives onto Behemoth. He's going to activate that TP. He's actually going to get away, so Swiftblade well and Mortis will just have to push the tower. Look at that tower does not like Swiftblade, man. Yeah. They cannot get away from it. And Hellbringer is pulling again. And, you know, I do understand why they want to pull with the Hellbringer, because he needs level 6 before he's useful. Yeah. Because Malphus is really broken. And last game, I didn't see anyone on the on WAP side actually picking up a uh, Nullfire. Which I find kind of disappointing, seeing as how long the game was. It would have been a really, really, really good pickup versus uh, that overpowered Mal Malphus thing. Oh, it's mid lane, true. Bubbles is uh, having a bad it's time. Locks down and just, yeah, insult to injury. The bat Was he AFK? Because, I mean, he had Shell Surf. He had Take Cover. He had everything. I'm not too sure. Was well, kind of weird looking. Even in this game, even if you get the Malphus null fired, it's it's still you get that deadly setup initiation of the Malphus yeah. stun. But I agree that the game went on too long for them not to buy it. Just this the push potential that he gives. There goes Bubbles using that shell surf to farm again. Nice uh, ward find by Hanks over here. Tassi making it too obvious that they had a ward by uh, sidestepping the demon strike coming out from Hanks. So he was like, oh, look, I have a rev ward. Why don't I? Interesting. Yeah, so I haven't really seen much out of Ravenra. They did get that gank onto Lodestone early on. But other than that, he's pretty much just passively farming away here. He's doing good, though. 380 GPM. Will he eventually rotate into the jungle and maybe let Behemoth farm bottom? I mean, is that going to be, like, the go-to strategy here? I don't know. It's uh, difficult with the new Ravenor because you actually just want to be as active as possible because you don't build charges anymore from auto attacks hmm. on uh, creeps. But as the main carry, uh, do you think we'll still see him be active then and not, not, like, passively farm? I mean, I would like to see him pick up uh, Portal Key, actually. Just really put pressure on the Hellborn side because, you know, Warbeast is having really bad farm in the woods. 270 gold per minute. I mean, he had no camps blocked and, uh, yeah, he should have farmed a lot better in my opinion. But, I mean, they do have the power of having the dogs when uh, they're maxed. Okay, so he decided to max Battlecry. Okay, that might be why his farm is suffering a little bit. Yeah, I'm not... I, I don't like this build. I mean, scouting with the dogs is just so powerful when they're level 4. Right, right. And uh, I mean, Bubbles didn't even win mid with Battlecry, so... Uh, Arch Tiger played a flawless Warbeast last game, so it is it is interesting that he deviate from the plan here, but... I, I think that as the game goes later, that it favors Hellborn team more, so maybe they're exactly. not too concerned with, with winning early game. No, but passive. then why does he level Battlecry? <clears throat> so they're not too concerned about winning early game. And really, like with Battlecry, Bubbles having like level, okay, I I'd say level 2 and 3 of the ability, because that's like the main laning stage phase, 22 or 33 damage. That's so much, like you win mid with that for sure versus a hag. I don't know. It feels uh, very awkward right now. Top for that. tower's going to fall here, but... I, I mean, ultimately, I, I agree with you. Like that, the item, the, the skill build doesn't make the most sense, but I don't think it's gonna completely like wreck the game for them or anything. Oh, here comes a, it's gonna connect onto bubbles, but they won't pursue. Interestingly enough, they got a little spooked there. Yeah, he can deny the mid tower if he wants to, but here comes oh, the shatter storm activated. Bubbles bubble storm comes in. FN's gonna eat the full brunt of that shatter storm. Here comes the Bat Blast connecting on the Bubbles. He tried to dodge it. He's going to actually TP away. One more. Oh, nice.
Pitfall activated by Gladiator at the last second. Here comes the ball. Lightning, it connects. Oh, that's the perfect way. If he missed that, it would have been huge. Now Hag's going to get away. And Warbeast is going to be forced to flee. So huge time by Ravener, who went with an Elder Parasite. So yep. uh, a lot of burst damage out there. Denied. I definitely think he's going to have to get a shrunken head, though, at one point against this Hellborn team. Yeah, but good news for the Hellborn team. They got back with that exchange. I mean, they got a tower. They got a kill at top lane, but uh, okay. What am I saying? Pingu is now uh, back killing the bottom tower. So yeah, Hag, 3-0-1. This is, this is not what you'd expect from uh, Bubbles versus Hag with Bubbles having Battlecraft. Swiftly coming down here to harass. He went for that Energizer route, and he's going to be working his way into the Firebrand. So uh, definitely pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. He could have gone for like an unorthodox Portal Key or something if he really wanted to get aggressive early. But that's going to work with him into later game too. So yeah, Elder Shield Breaker Portal Key, best build. Yeah, it's funnest build for sure. <laughs> but here we go. Lodestone is choosing to go for the uh, quick portal key build again. He's not choosing to get any items other than uh, bottle, boots, and power supply. And, you know, I agree. Without PK, Lodestone feels really, really weak. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And with, with the heroes, um, Bubbles and Malphus ultimate, that's perfect. I mean, you really need to be able to follow those heroes up. Mm -hmm. Portal key makes it that much easier. I don't know why. I... I would probably have him grab Striders too. Just why not? Yeah, it's I mean, 200 gold. He is 2 2 though, so he's doing a great job keeping his team in the game. Swift Blade as well, getting those solo kills on Behemoth have been uh, quite valuable. That being said though, Behemoth is 500 away from Portal Key. Yeah, he's found a good amount of farm here. Or It's funny, he's not that much GPM higher than Lodestone, but he was just apparently a lot smarter with what he bought and spent. Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, it's kind of weird. But here goes Lodestone. Yeah, Lodestone's going to get initiated on here. Oh, he gets the Rocket Drill off just in time to prevent the Gladiator ultimate. But Hag blinking in, putting in the Sonar Scream and the Bat Blast. The oh, Pitfall's pitfall. going to finish him off here. Oh, uh, Hellbringer yeah. is level 6 here, so they definitely could set something up. And the whole team is coming to join the party. Um, Except for... Strange yeah, enough, Swift Blade. I mean, they could have fought that. They had Hellbringer yeah. ultimate. They at least get a kill or two off. He's not helping ultimates. Probably going to sit on cooldown for an equal 200 seconds. Or uh, It would have been yeah. on cooldown, but now it's just going to be off of cooldown with no use gained from it. Exactly. Warbeast going to clean up this top lane here. This could be his portal key, but not if Swiftblade can help it. He activates Oh, what an ult. Oh, he tried to get the shockwave off, but the timing was just not there. That's going to be... That's, that, that hurts on your behemoth. That was yeah. his portal key, and now it's just another two minutes. Another two minutes of farming. But Cyrox, uh, in that regard, is doing really well. Yeah. Actually being top farmer in the game. I was really brave of him, too, and it, it definitely paid off. And that's... I love when players use their cooldowns. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, if it's there, just use it. It's like when you see a Bubbles... Well, not specifically this game, but any game. You have your mid-hero, who's full mana, and it's a hero like Bubbles or like Hag, and they don't use their spells. Yeah, when they're full mana. I mean, you might as well put it on cooldown and start regening that mana because any harass you can put in there means more regen used by the other mid hero or means that, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're a little bit lower great. if a teammate rotates in for a gank. Pitfall going to connect onto Bubbles, but again, limited follow-up by WAP. Um, I wish Behemoth had the portal key here. Yeah, if you keep your enemy heroes at like... Even 75% health, it just makes the ganks that much more successful, too. It's, I don't know why people hold on to their cooldown so much. Yeah, PK now picked up on Ravener, so they are going to go for a bit of that aggressive route. I mean, oh, here comes Wretched Hag. He's got to be careful. He does have a double damage. That's um, a situation where he should have Malphus ulted. Because he was, he was coming there. He was almost in range with Demon Strike. He's level 7, so he could disable yeah, him for almost him. 4 seconds. Oh, in the middle lane, they're going to lock down Behemoth once again. Portal Key definitely not going to be finished on him yet, but the TP's coming in by the rest of the Legion team. They at least punish Lodestone and delay his Portal Key a little bit further, but this is twice now. Uh, Behemoth Portal Key definitely could have turned the tides. 
but just look at the experience uh, again, the experience charts. I mean, it might look like the two top farmers, Hag and Ravener, are doing a great job, but it falls off so steeply after that. Whereas on the Hellborn team, you have Bubbles, who's doing decent, and Warbeast, who's doing decent, and then Swiftblade, who's doing really well. So at this point, I'd say Reason yeah. is in the lead, even though they have lost one more tower than the enemy team. So basically, this means that Reason has more potential gold to gain. If they can win a team fight, then they have more towers to farm, and it would bring them back into the lead easier. Right. Yeah, and I mean, it, Malfus it's being used bottom here. Okay, yeah, but... Malfus is used here. Swiftly activating the spin, he's chasing a Ravenar. He's got to turn his attention to Gladiator, who's trying to put in the Gladiator. Ultimate does connect in a Hellbringer, but there's nobody really to follow up with any sort of damage. Hags diving deep, gets the Bat Blast onto three heroes. That was really well positioned. Now Swiftblade's going to fall. Gladiator manning up extremely fun there. Uh, and Wretched Act with that Haste Rune, not really in fear of anything. Uh, I mean, that was really well played by Hag. Yeah. The haste rune definitely helping with that, but it was also just a bit too desperate with the yeah. Malphus. I mean, he was just walking up, ultied, and then that wasn't even in range for his demon uh, strike. Yeah, and I didn't catch the ultimate. I came late, but normally you won't do that unless you have somebody nearby to follow up, and I didn't really see anybody on the hag. Oh, here comes a blink hellflower onto Lodestone. Ravener connects the ball lightning. They put out a ton of damage, empath inside of him as well. Uh, that's a deep dive, but apparently they got <laughs> they got it and got away scot free here. So, mm -hmm. and uh, Warbeast is just doing his thing in the top lane. This game he should uh, definitely go for a shrunken, but I'm still afraid they might not have enough damage in that case because Swiftblade is really easily kited at the moment. You saw that at the bottom lane as well. Top lane, War Beast Ooh, is Behemoth getting Behemoth. Ooh, Behemoth Shockwave gonna lock down War Beast here and the Gladiator Ultimate to finish the job. They had just enough damage and well staggered abilities there to guarantee that he wasn't gonna get away. And this game is pretty back and forth though. I mean, again, I, I felt like Legion team, did, they had to they had to do well early to have any real chance at, at winning this game, and they are. And it's just like last game. Uh, it's There's no clear winner this far 20 minutes into the game, so... Yeah, it was a uh, good use of their first uh, of the Portal King on Behemoth. Because I mean, it was uh, it was a surprise for sure. But I really like how Warbeast is going for a puzzle this game. It allows him to, uh, you know, they have so much AOE on the Legion team that one of them might just end up killing themselves. <laughs> it's true. That thing does a ton of damage. Is the explosion true damage? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's um, 600 true damage when max, 200, 400, 600. It's so much. Like, when you see somebody do it and their health the just Legion gets chunked for like 60%. Yeah. And they have nothing on the Legion team to really deal with it right now. And Pingu uh, is actually getting a Whispering Helm as well, so he's really uh, focusing on that lifesteal. <laughs> Swiftblade's still doing good. Farming up there, he just finished his Frost Burn. And it just, he's been really active, too, even though he died twice, though. I mean, but. he's not really been active. He's just been in his lane killing Behemoth. It's true. Yeah, I don't well, know. I, I count uh... that as... I mean, he's not passively farming. He, he did yeah. hinder Behemoth's portal key a while, so... Yeah, but it's not like he was porting to lanes to try and gank. Yeah, no, they're still down six kills. Don't get me wrong. The reason is... It needs to step it up here, but again, I don't feel like the pressure's on them um, to do it right uh, to away. To be honest, though, I'm not so sure that they shouldn't be feeling pressure. Because although they have the good team fight support with Hellbringer, it's kind of... It's scary. It, it's it's got to be really lane. scary. Versus, Warbeast has that uh, activate ultimate, but the ball lightning connects. Warbeast is going to fall here. At least they don't get denied on the bottom tower, but still a fairly uneven trade once again. I mean, yeah. I would be worried if I was Hellborn. Maybe now. I, I, and the, for some reason in the back of my head, I had the Warbeast. Is, he's, got, he's farming great, but he's not anymore. He's, he's died twice in the past few minutes here, and... Even if he finishes that puzzle box, that's not a ton of damage, like you said. They they lack well, damage for sure. I mean, it's a lot of damage. It, it really is a lot of damage. If uh, you manage to micro it well and uh, get the mana drain off as well, 
Oh, rocket drill. One player. But in general, the Hellborn yeah. team, they have to land all of their abilities to, to have enough. Yeah, but I would be so afraid. Because two 500 GPM heroes on the, on the Legion side. I mean, Ravenor is still a snowball hero, as is Hag, so in that regard, they should be very worried. They have a decent turtling team with Lodestone and um, Hellbringer and Bubbles, but I mean, it won't matter if, uh, you know, Pingu just life steals every time he gets a rest. Yeah. Yeah, Ravenor's going to be hard to take down for sure. Here comes Initiation. Eh, it's the Song of the Sea and a Shell Surf. Hellborn this is when, the, when Hellborn needs to go, when they know that Tessie just used his port to get away. Oh, they are scouting the Gladiator. Good catch by Lodestone. Pit falling on himself, doesn't connect. The Gladiator ultimate also will not connect. Swiftblade had his Blade Frenzy up. They're going to finish off Gladiator in the background. Hopefully, here goes a Behemoth Shockwave, though. He's going to lock him down and make sure that Swiftblade falls before he can get that ultimate off. Now, uh, Warbeast is going to have to retreat. They are going to continue to chase him, though. His, uh... Yeah, I think he's gonna, do, he's gonna die here, isn't he? Yes. Patrick coming out for Ravenor. And when I say turtling team, I mean turtling in your base and not going all the way to the river to give Hag a chance to get back. Wow, that was yeah. that was a fiasco. I mean, they had a jump on. They. <laughs> hey, it was a good jump by Lodestone. Oh, so good block coming out from Behemoth. Hellbringer. Lodestone's oh, gonna catch him out. Behemoth will fall down as a result, but Hag's gonna put in the auto attacks here. Clean up Lodestone. That's four people down. It's about to be a genocide. Patrick <laughs> wow. went out for Tassie, and yeah, he's genocide. just he's level 18, jumping on level 10s and 12s. Yeah, and that's the experience ridiculous. deficit is is more punishing than the gold at this point. This game, wow, Tassie is just massacring. Everything. Behemoth. And it's not only that, Behemoth as well. What an ultimate just now in the mid lane. The yeah, and he did, even though he got punished, he tower. got close to that portal key early on. So he, he did good in the suicide role as well as Lodestone did. Uh, Behemoth is just more impactful of a hero. Um, mm -hmm. Well, Lodestone is the only hero with a lot of impact at the moment, I'd say, for a Hellborn team. The rest of the heroes have uh, dropped off uh, quite intensely. Like I mean, look at Cyrox. He's got the frost burn, but he's only down to four. He's down to 400 GPM now. Yeah. He's so <laughs> look at the hero damage. Wretched Hag sitting at 30%, and the <laughs> rest of the Hellborn team barely adding up to that. If you add them all together. Yeah, that's insane. That's pretty impressive. This might end up ending sooner than I had thought. Like I, I don't know. I'm just looking at the GPM, 620 on uh, Tessie. He's really taking this game over. He's got a Shrunken now as well, and another 3k gold on top of that. So all he needs now is a Shield Breaker, and then he's a uh, full-on carry. Yeah. Hellborn team, they're really feeling the pressure now. The aggressive warding coming out from Wapdash and their positioning, it just looks like you know they're backing them into a corner here, completely choking out any kind of farm or recovery. And if they step a foot out of their base, you can guarantee the Legion team's going to just jump right on top of them. Mm -hmm. Archie Tiger is uh, now getting that puzzle box. He has it in. He has it, but it's only going to be level one. And at that point, it's really not that good. And he is scouting well with the dog. So he sees them trying to set up for Kong. And he got a shield breaker. He got a shield yes! breaker. Yes, oh I called God. it. I called it. I mean, they need physical damage. I mean, why not, right? Yeah, intelligence heroes have like the highest damage too. I mean. Hit for hit, it's yeah. He's up at the 186, so pierce to any kind of armor. That's ridiculous. Plus yeah, he's I really got like decent it. attack speed from the Hellflower. Yeah, it 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 works. It's definitely gonna work. Labyrinth is gonna fall, but yeah, Swiftblade is. He doesn't know where he needs to go. I mean, they want to try and stop this Kong. They have a ward up, but by time to die. Don't know why he would use dust there. I mean, they scouted out the Hag with it, but. Uh, okay, yeah. here's the channeling of the ultimate. Malphus ultimate Malphus. coming out. 
Oh, he's gonna get the Shatter Storm off onto a couple heroes, but the Storm Spirit's gonna keep alive. Switch Slash is coming out of the background, doing decent damage, but Ravener with that Wing Bow able to stay alive, and here comes the Life Leech. Oh my god, Ravener will not fall down, instantly calling the Concede Boat. Oh man, you called it. If you don't instantly kill Ravener, he, there's no way. He would just come back at you full health. That was some yeah. Warbeast style regeneration, or uh, Wild Soul style. That was a uh, quick game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, to say the least. But, uh, I mean, Tassie on fire that game. Yeah. I mean, Pingu as well, nine zero three. Yep. They, oh, yeah, they're no. just like the, the forerunners of that team. And really good Storm Spirit at the end by Cookies as well in the team fight where Shatterstorm missed because of uh, Storm. Yeah, to say the least. But uh, a nice even series to start out the day. Uh, both teams taking one game off and proving that why they're Diamond League teams. I love a balanced matchup like that. Um, it just it just makes it all the more fun to, to watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But with that being said, uh, I guess we're going to go to a short break here. Uh, probably not too long because that game finished up quick, but scheduled to start at 1400 Eastern time, 2000 Central European time. Sync Esports versus Team Druids. Um, so with that being said, we are going to go to a short break here. Any last words before we do so? I'll take that as a no. Oh, oh crap. Sorry. Um, Mike was <laughs> muted. Um, That's okay. Uh, yeah. Good series. Uh, good even. Well, many, the, many they, wow. They, such many wow. No, uh, WAP should have brought this, uh, fire in the first game. Uh, yeah, for sure. And we're going to see them tomorrow as well. Uh, so. And I'm going to throw a straw poll up. Uh, tomorrow we have to choose between BMG versus Wapdash or Sync Esports versus Complexity. I know that may seem kind of silly. Obviously, most people might want to see Sync versus Complexity. But at the same time, we're already covering those teams in the other games. So I'll look for the straw poll here in about five minutes, guys. Let me.